not really funny to people who have lost their kids mm, no. to this vaccine or people who have lost family members. Or this is not something we're doing because it's, you know, sexually gratifying. This is what we're doing to protect our families. And you don't have to do it, but stay away from everybody. Because then stay out of the public, man. This is not, nobody wants this. I don't want it. And I think he's forgetting that people are still at risk who cannot get vaccinated. People who can't get the little kids under the age of five yeah. or people with health conditions. How dare you be so flippant, man? They're, they're, still, like, they're, gotta, they're over it. Like, yeah. like a relationship. I'm yeah. over it. I don't feel like don't seeing him anymore. Once again, people are still at risk. Don't you care about the people who died? What about the children? How dare you? How dare you, Whoopi? For two years, the American people have sacrificed incredibly during this pandemic. They have proven over and over and over again they're not a spoiled, selfish bunch of brats. They lost jobs, businesses, careers, marriages, life savings, while at the same time in many cases losing parents, friends, colleagues, and teachers. They get it. They watched their children's anxiety, stress, depression, and even suicidal ideations go through the roof, all in the name of doing their part. They wore masks when they didn't want to. They got vaxxed and boosted when they didn't necessarily need to. They missed graduations, weddings, births, even funerals. They did all of this because they do care. And they were willing to make sacrifices for the good of society. But that calculation involves a balancing test. And at some point, the safety provided to society by these measures will no longer outweigh the negative impact on one's self, one's family, and one's community. And we're there. That's what Barry and Bill and these moms and I are saying. We have vaccines. We have therapeutics. We have PCR tests. We have antigen tests. We know far more about this virus than we used to, like the fact that we can all get and spread it, vaccinated and masked or not. And it is time to try to get back to normal. Like those red-pilled liberal moms that I met. I have young kids, and I also have an 80-year-old mother. And I get the need to protect the young and the old. My mom, she takes precautions and we help her. But she would never want our children to stay in COVID purgatory until all risk had been abated. Why are we treating our seniors, most of whom live through far more challenging times than we have without caving to their fears, as if they are incapable of handling risk? They're strong. They know how to protect themselves. And most of them have no interest in burdening their children and grandchildren, even if it would eliminate some risk to themselves. As for children under five who cannot yet be vaxxed, whoopee, what a red herring, and you know it. The COVID death rate of healthy children under 11 is approximately zero. What these kids need is not more restrictions, it's less. They need to go to school to see their friends' faces, to play, to sing, to play sports, and get their heart rates up and have their faces uncovered while doing so, to eat lunch indoors, and to laugh and talk, not through plexiglass, to have their proms, their graduations, to not be treated like they are dirty, disease-carrying killers.